Welcome to the channel, friends. So today's video is going to be covering a quick uh, summary and review on the Pro Speed Fan dual fan setup for ZR1 C6. Uh, this is a awesome fan setup. It's a complete upgrade to the OEM fan, which is one big single fan. This here is constructed of a aluminum chassis or shroud, which fully kind of captures the fins in the radiator to provide enough suction through the whole core of the radiator versus the factory piece, which doesn't do that. It has some spots where it's wide open and it's not um, able to draw on the fins the same way this would. So this here, as you can see, is two high quality spall uh, 12 inch fans, I believe. And they're uh, high performance fans, heavy duty. And this is set up for serious performance. So this is, like I said, a pro speed setup, uh, custom made. It takes about four to six weeks uh, once you place an order to get this uh, fan kit. It's very specific to Zero One, so they make a separate one for the C6, all the other models. But as you can see, it's a very simple layout, very sim simple setup on this. Essentially, you're going to drop your OEM fan out and put this one in place and then run these positive leads to your fuse box and your ground. That's all that has to be connected, uh, as well as this here. So this is going to be your OEM connector. So it's going to get the signal from your ECU from here and power from these. And then that's going to take care of your cooling needs and your high performance, high horsepower build. Uh, typically, you'd want this if you got like a car over a 7-800 wheel. Um, my car right now is right about 1,000. So um, it definitely needs a cooling upgrade. I've just been holding off, but this is the one I wanted to get for sure uh, for my car. So these here are the Pro Speed PWM control module. So that stands for pulse width modulating. And um, I've heard mixed reviews about this. These may or may not fail, but I'm, I'm hoping they, they work just fine and do the, uh, what they're intended to do without any issues. So we'll go from there. But I, ha I have heard stories about these modules failing. I don't know uh, what is the cause of that. Um, I didn't do too much research on that, but I will uh, keep an eye on that for sure. But for the most part, I'm going to get ready to install this in the car. I'm going to go ahead and kind of like zip tie some of these things down so they're like less in the way and kind of tucked away. And then I'll give you guys an update on the overall kind of install and a summary afterwards. I, I don't think... Um, videotaping the actual install is going to be very beneficial, but um, if I do, I'm, I'm going to include some clips right after this. And um, all right, so let me get to it and uh, we'll get this installed and let you know what I think and how the process goes and any kind of um, kind of tips you may need if you're going to do this on your own car. All right, so real quick, I want to mention the operation of these flaps. So you have these two flaps at the bottom here, rubber flaps with these cutouts and windows. Now, what that's for is, at low speed, these are going to obviously get suctioned and close. Now, at high speed, um, the fan actually becomes a restriction. So what happens is, the shroud, I should say, becomes a restriction because there's so much surface area being blocked and the air is passing through the fans. Um, in high speed, I'm talking about, you know, I don't know, 80 miles and, and above per hour. So what happens is, these flaps will open up and pass air through to have less restriction top and bottom. So that's what that is for. That's why you see them kind of louvered and flapped. And that's essentially uh, opens up the shroud for less resistance as you, as you pick up speed um, moving forward with the car. So this is a really kind of well thought out, well designed unit. But let me go ahead now and start the install and I'll keep you guys updated on what I think and how it goes.
All right, guys, so I'm back a few weeks later after doing some stuff in the car, and I finally got this Pro Speed fan installed. And I want to go over some of the, the, the issues I had with the install on my particular car. Now, at first, I could not get this to fit in. I had to take it completely apart and then install the aluminum housing or chassis first onto the radiator and then I went ahead and installed each one of the fans individually so I could fit it past the sway bar and once I had those fans installed I actually had an issue with this lower fan here touching the sway bar uh, really pushing into it so after messing around with it I realized that the best thing for me to do since I have my radiator support dropped 3 8 of an inch on spacers um, I actually took the fan, this lower fan, and I flipped it 180 degrees on the bolt pattern, and that ended up working for me. Um, essentially, what was hitting was the wires at the very bottom of the back cover on the fan was touching the sway bar. So once I flipped it 180, I was able to have clearance about an eighth of an inch right now installed with the sway bar bolted down, and I'm good to go. So I ran into an issue because... My radiator support, the whole like support frame system that holds up the radiator is dropped three eighths of an inch because I have a, a large, uh, I was running a 112 and now I'm running a 120 millimeter throttle body. So that's why I have that dropped, which caused an issue with the fitment of this. Now, another issue I had with the, uh, the, the wiring is that it's too short. And I didn't like how the layout was, uh, the way it, w it came to me out of the box. So what I did was I actually flipped these modules around completely 180, which allowed me to gain some slack, enough to get it uh, routed properly up on the engine bay. I'll show you in just a second. But those modules, I had to flip them around. I took a picture of like the layout and the wiring, how they're connected, so I had a reference. And then I went ahead and flipped them around to give me more slack because... It allows those wires to exit on the right hand, the upper right hand side versus the lower, the lower left, uh, in this view here. So that took care of that. Be be very mindful when doing this because the back of those modules are actually a heat sink, and there's thermal paste that makes contact to the the aluminum chassis on the um, the, the fan kit. So there's a white aluminum paste, same thing you'd see in microprocessors for uh, thermal uh, conduction. Uh, is on the back of these modules, these PWM modules. Um, so that's what I did. I flipped those 180, same thing with the lower fan. And the upper fan is in the original orientation. That was what I needed to do to make this thing fit. I, like I said, it is a very tight fit. These hoses here are in your way. I had like a couple bungee cords to try to hold them out of the way. And I had the power steering oil cooler, which is located right at the bottom here. It was in my way, so I had to pull that out of everything to the left, essentially, to allow me to like slide in this um, aluminum chassis um, as it as it is by itself. Like I said, I had to take everything apart to make this fit because the sway bar was still an issue after I unbolted it. So, and I just let it droop. So it's it's just not enough clearance. I had to take everything apart. And in my situation here, just a heads up, it's not as easy as you think. And one other thing I want to mention is that the the edges on the aluminum housing, the shroud, are very sharp. So be very careful. Wear, wear gloves or go ahead like I did and deburr the whole aluminum shroud. Because good thing I did because I would have cut myself up really bad if I didn't do that. So I'm a little like unhappy in the presentation of the aluminum shroud because it was very sharp. All the edges were sharp. It's basically a piece of stamped aluminum and the result was that it was left very sharp and there was no prep work or deburring done uh, for the consumer or the end user uh, to be safe in handling the fan you know yes you can wear gloves but I feel that you shouldn't have to wear gloves to install a car part like this this should come already finished and uh, you know you shouldn't have to worry about cutting your your hands open on a razor edge so just keep that in mind, just a word of caution. Uh, please deburr your your uh, your fan shroud pro speed. I like the product, but that is one thing that seriously is um, 
It, it, there's no excuse for that. It's a very expensive fan kit, so you can't just take 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever, and deburr the whole thing, all the edges, uh, to make a nice smooth edge and, and not have your, your end users, your customers, cut themselves on your product. But anyways, let me go to the top of the car in the engine bay and show you the rest of um, kind of the, the issues I had with the install. And let's go take a look at that right now. Okay, so just a little sneak peek of the uh, the latest projects I have going on here. I also finished up my upper tank here, which is fully insulated with foam and heat wrap. And I also went ahead and added this larger opening, this larger lid uh, to run ice. And I also have a drain below here, the fitting. So all I have to do is go ahead and drain and then fill my ice and go on my merry way. Also, as you see right here is something different. So this right here is a actual speed controller for the intercooler pumps. That way I can fine tune, turn them on down to like 30%, 40% and see what the balance point is. The perfect like, uh, you know, speed for, for whatever RPM I need or whatever I'm doing. So I want to test this out. This is still in the testing phase, but it's essentially going to control the RPMs of the intercooler pumps. Because if you slow them down, it actually cools better versus like full speed, 100%, um, whatever the actual pumps can do. So moving along, we have, this is the fuse for the Pro Speed fan. You have two of them, 260 fuses. And I mounted it right here, nice conveniently next to the fuse box. Looks really clean and uh, everything looks like it falls in place, like an OEM setup. All right, so moving along, the other issue I had was with this right here. So this is the Kong Performance Dual Idler uh, Tensioner. And this, this hose was touching the tensioner right off the bat. And that's because you have to place this hose, this whole assembly, on top of the upper fan. And that pushes it up even further than it was before. So by doing that, it pushed it right up against this idler pulley. And that's not good. You want to have at least a three-eighths of an inch clearance here, your pinky to fit in there, uh, to allow this to swing back and forth. It will turn clockwise, the whole thing, the tensioner, when you're under boost and you, you rub the engine. So you want to have enough clearance there. I had to shorten that like another inch, inch and a half on top of what I had to shorten it to begin with when I first installed this tensioner. So overall, I had to shorten this OEM hose probably about three inches. And then I clamped it back down and pushed it out of the way. And now it seems like it's not an issue. As you can see, there's plenty of clearance. But that there, um, you know, it just shows that like everything you do in a modified car uh, requires some kind of modification. There's no way in hell that you're going to buy these aftermarket parts and think they're just going to drop in because they're not. There's always some bullshit going on where you have to like uh, cut something, push something out of the way redirect something, you know, flip things around like I had to do here, um, shorten the OEM coolant hose, because if they told you this to begin with, that you had to do all this shit to begin with, they, you probably wouldn't have, end up buying it. So this is the stuff you end up figuring out after buying this $1,000 fan kit and having it, you know, going through the process of installing it in your own vehicle. You end up figuring out, okay, this, is, this really isn't dropping. You know, we have, have to modify all sorts of OEM stuff to do it. But that's okay. Um, I feel that that's just a very minor sacrifice to get this fan kit installed. But with all that said, um, the fan kit is still worth it in my eyes. So I'm going to continue, you know, using it and uh, going through the paces with it and see how it does. Um, especially in the summertime, I've heard good reviews. So uh, that's, uh, that's good to hear and I, I'm really looking forward to it. So that there is a quick summary of all the stuff I did, and uh, maybe you'll, you'll be asking what this is. Well, that's a little insulated jacket. You know, there's a little piece of foam in here, and then there's this heat sleeve over it uh, to protect the lid sensor. Because, believe it or not, these sensors are so sensitive. If you hold on to the, to the actual brass body of these sensors, they change the resistance. So imagine what the engine heat does to this when there is tons of heat soak, 200 degree engine bay, and your brass body on your sensor is just heat soaked. It's going to change the, the reading a little bit. So I'm testing this out as well. I made a little kind of foam jacket for it. And then I put this heat sleeve on top of it uh, to further protect it. And it kind of match the overall theme going on here, which is the, uh, 
the gold Floyd Mayweather <laughs> ZR1 theme, but <laughs> it's it's actually a functional thing. I didn't I didn't like actually intend to make everything gold. Um, it just happened over time because this is the good stuff. The DEI stuff is the stuff you want. This is all the the higher quality heat heat sleeve material. Same thing with the Thermotac. It's a, it's high quality stuff. Um, but I ended up seeing that the gold looked better with the dark kind of theme of the the engine, the valve covers, the lid. Um, so I ran with it. So I put gold everywhere. And like I said, the new intercooler tank here that I modified uh, to have ice and the drain is wrapped in foam and then wrapped in that nice DEI uh, heat sheet material. Uh, it's not tape. The tape looks cheap. It's too many seams. This is actually like one piece of like sheet that I cut uh, for all six sides, essentially. And I did it so it looks seamless. It looks like one one solid piece. You're not going to find any seams on this. Uh, it's not tape. So you guys who think it's tape, it, you guys are fucking crazy. Uh, but it's done properly. I did it to, to make it look as, as good as possible. Obviously, I wanted it to look OEM, uh, even though it's a modified car, obviously. But I did everything I, I tried to to make it make it look really nice. But anyways, that's going to be it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.